Welcome to Macro Peace Theater. I'm your narrator, Emil Kalinowski, and today we'll be reading from Jeff Snyder's blog at Alhambra Investments about the Treasury Inflation Protected Security curve, that it's inverted, that the mm, medium to long-term Treasury yield curve is flat and or flattening and or going the wrong way, and how these curves, despite a deluge of short-term bills, are all in agreement and the deluge of short-term bills meaning there's a lot of money there's a lot of collateral so the constraint of the debt ceiling has passed so we can get to the business of growing the economy yeah there's some signals saying boom that's the inflation break-evens but all the other things no they're saying deflationary disinflationary potential is rising over the past week and a half, Treasury has rolled out the CMBs, one after the other. CMBs are cash management bills, they're like Treasury bills, but they're special issues, not otherwise part of a regular debt rotation. They have rolled out the following, 60, a 60 billion 40 day issue, on the 19th, a 60 billion 27 day issue on the 20th, a 40 billion 48 day issue just yesterday. And this was written on the 28th of October, remember. Treasury also snuck in 60 billion of a 39 day CMB into the market on the 14th to go along with the two scheduled 119 day CMBs during this period. That is a quick 220 billion above and beyond what was expected before the October 13th announcement. The effect of bill supply on bill yields and therefore collateral, collateral constraints so far is not large. Nearly a quarter trillion of these ad hoc issues stuffed into barely two weeks and yet while front rates have gone up, they've hardly gone up by much at all. In fact, the eight-week regular T-bill is the only one raised up, and that's more about December, the debt ceiling comes back, than it is about supply. The rest of them remain fixated around five or six basis points. While certainly providing some level of reprieve, the lack of further upward fluctuation in them might help us explain what else is going on further down the curve and therefore the true picture of economic potential heading toward 2021's finish. This, along with real yields, is the story of what's missing from most commentary otherwise focused on TIPS, Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, and inflation. And even to the latter, inflation, while break-evens have indeed spiked since last September, near vertically in the five-year, this obscures the behavior along the rest of that particular curve, too. As has been the case all year, since January 8th, the five-year break-even rate is inverted, given how the 10-year break-even drags behind it. Because of this inversion, the five-year rate is higher than the 10-year rate break-even, it doesn't contribute at all much to the five-year five-year forward inflation rate, which, even today, only matches the most recent high set back in May. The market is saying, quite emphatically, whatever the government will be forced to pay out in CPI protection, how tips are priced, basically the lagging oil price effect on CPI, this will remain firmly contained in the shorter run. To put the exclamation on it, the fives over tens inversion in terms of break-evens is now by far the most on record. In short, price effects in the short run, and then this is where the rest of the curve takes right over, and not in any good nor inflationary way. The nominal yield curve keeps flattening. Today, the difference between the nominal five-year rate and that at the 10-year maturity sinking fast to just 38 basis points. That's the lowest since August 2020, when yields last reached their prior lows. The spread between the two-year and the 10-year 
dropped to just 104 basis points. That flattening in the nominal yield curve is actually and perfectly consistent with the upside down trading of tips break evens, as well as, if not more so, the same growing pessimism and rising deflation potential outside the short term priced into the nominal side of tips. That side, the real side, real yields are real awful and getting worse the higher energy prices go. There is no taper tantrum anywhere here, certainly not Emil Kalinowski's uh, more appropriate description of 2013 as the short-lived taper celebration. These curves are even missing the more frequent suggestions of stagflation as this growth scare part becomes more difficult to ignore and dismiss. The bond market moving in the direction of nominal growth and inflation would be more like it had been during 2013's celebratory sell-off. Steepening curve with rapidly rising real rates. We've got serious flattening and further downward in real rates that haven't once yet recovered from recession lows. These actions are not some policy error either especially given the small effect from the deluge of cash management bills. In other words, put it all together, bonds globally are saying current inflation, Jeff here means uh, price increases, consumer price increases, not monetary inflation, is still going to be transitory, if painful, in gasoline prices along the way. And this is enough, it always seems to be, to convince the FOMC to turn hawkish, despite the fact that the underlying economy is absolutely nothing like what the Fed is modeling and the media keeps saying. On the contrary, the way and the speed at which the curves are contorting, there is more being priced into the growing growth scare as any of the other. Talking about these same yield curve distortions in 2019, I wrote about the great lengths people will go to dismiss these relatively clear signals. Forget inverted tips or the utterly disgusting potential of real rates. Just look at the very simple message from the flat yield curve, which proved, since all the way back into 2017, to end up spot on as to growth, inflation, and the predictable way in which Jay Powell's Fed would get it all wrong. It is absolutely amazing the lengths people will go to in order to deny the most straightforward and obvious explanation to torture and twist plain evidence that's the thing about rationalizing though their narrative usually matters more than the facts if the world hadn't been fooled into blindly following central bankers to rationalize and make excuses for simple and straightforward facts all anyone would have needed this whole time to perfectly understand the situation was treasury rates and the yield curve. With short-run tips, break-evens, running wild, how can anyone say there's a dollar shortage and dramatically rising deflationary potential right now? Easy, actually. The mountain of data and the repeating behavior of the bond market in curves has already spotted you the first 19 letters. Thank you for listening to this latest episode of Macro Peace Theater. What 19 letters? Well, Jeff, actually, if you read his uh, blog posts at Alhambra Investments, he will sneak in memes. Yes, you wouldn't think it, but Jeff is quite up to date on his internet memes. And in this particular case here, he's got Vanna White at the board, having turned over 19 of 20 letters and the first 19 letters spell out global, dollar, and then the next few words or letters are S-H-O-R-T-A-G. And then there's a picture of a certain Federal Reserve Chairman with a quizzical look asking, is there a cue?